folks. Super stoked to be here today sharing this project with you. It's a new little venture that I have going on. I've partnered up with mixed media maven Jen Engel, and we are taking turns creating mood boards once a month to inspire each other's creative brains. And after you've watched both of our videos, we'd like to invite you to join us and create a project based on our mood board. It's super easy, and you'll be able to upload that via my blog. So watch our videos and uh, you can read all of the information in our description in um, in the description boxes underneath our videos. All right, I'm starting here with a gallery wrapped eight by eight inch canvas. I have a piece um, of resin from the Relics and Artifacts line by Sandra Evertson for Prima, Prima Marketing. I have a Simply Simmons wash brush and uh, I also have some matte medium. Then to the left there, you can kind of see a huge selection of collage papers. Some of them are vintage texts um, from different books and dictionaries and some medical books that I've kind of been collecting over the last few years. And a few other pieces from um, just other books. I also have a vintage um, prescription. It's kind of a favorite little item of mine that I have. I have a big stack of them, maybe about a hundred of them or something. I think I'll scan those in and see if I can't uh, share those at some point in time. Um, I also went and I got some pattern, vintage pattern. It's got a kind of a cool sepia um, tint to it. And then also some tissue paper from Seven Gypsies or and or canvas core. That's the kind of, excuse me, darker one with all the fun numbers on it. That's a really great piece to have. And I'm just collaging these onto my canvas using matte medium. I'm making sure that I'm putting a layer of matte medium underneath. Then I put the collage element, different papers, and then I put the matte medium on top. I am using matte medium today from Dick Blick, and I really do love Golden's matte medium, but sometimes I worry that it's a little bit thin for some of my thicker papers. And this one from Dick Blick has kind of uh, a little bit of thickness to it um almost kind of like a like a an egg white maybe where a the golden's matte medium kind of reminds me a little bit more of yolk not in color just in consistency so um depending on what i'm collaging onto and collaging uh, sometimes i pick the dick blick jar over the golden but you can use whatever makes you comfortable and of course you could always have matte medium and gel medium out for when you get to some of your thicker papers too just making sure that I'm covering up most of the areas and I am wrapping uh, the collage papers around the side because this gallery canvas, it's really wide. It has a really great lip to it and I don't want um, the edges to just kind of fade into the to non-existence. Like I want them to be a part of this project. Then I do um, tend to speed things up by heating them. So I'm just giving it a quick heat here. And I've gotten out some Liquitex gesso. Uh, this is the professional smooth gesso and I really love how thin and kind of sheer it goes on. It doesn't always have a, um, like awesome coverage, but that's exactly what I'm shooting for. So I still want my fun collage papers to peek through, but I'm using this white gesso to kind of blend them together so that they're a little more cohesive rather than these sort of blocks of text and texture and kind of graphic going on. And I'm still keeping in mind what's happening on the side of my canvas, which is relatively new for me. I kind of have to keep reminding myself not to neglect the sides of my canvas. Uh, after this, I I did give it a heat and kind of see where it was at and then decided that it needed just a little bit more uh, pushback. So kind of making that into a background rather than uh, a main point of view. And I'm using, I am using my fingers. I use my fingers a lot. If you're worried about that, you could always use gloves or um, art guard or something like that. Now I've gotten out a palette knife and it's quite the opposite effect using a palette knife versus using my fingers. When I use my fingers, it's super organic and flowy and everything kind of moves really well together. But if I use the very flat edge of a palette knife and I scrape it along, I don't put a lot of gesso on the back, just a little bit and I scrape it along the canvas, it catches all the kind of ridges and textures that are happening between the different types of paper and the overlap and things like that. And so I let that dry and I was loving it so much that I decided to get out a thicker gesso. This is the artist's version, or um, I should say the artist grade 
gesso by Blick and it has like a purple label on it just so you know because they have other other grades as well I've put some tacks in the bottom of my canvas so that it will stand up from the desk and now I can really kind of concentrate a little bit on the sides of those can of, of that canvas that's kind of what I was mentioning earlier I have to keep reminding myself and um, changing some things here so that I can incorporate those sides more and by putting the tacks underneath the canvas when I flip it over the bottom of the canvas is not going to rest on the table anymore and it can be free and dry so I'm using that super um, it's it's pretty heavy using that heavy gesso to add more texture in a similar fashion um, that I had done with the Liquitex gesso in the beginning but now it's a bit thicker it's giving more texture and creating lots of body and kind of grittiness and I really concentrated on the sides of the canvas um, kind of covering everything up and making it really stiff and textury on the sides. so it's really cool I do heat with the heat gun to kind of help it along but then I also I pause the camera and I walk away and I gave it a full night to dry because that heavy gesso it's very important that it's dried all the way through that it's completely cured otherwise when I start to work with it it might move and give way and then I'll just have like gesso mixed in everything I'm working on I'm now going to do some glazing and I've gotten out a little cup and I have done um, about a third fluid acrylic and this is this is the acrylic by Deco Art. They are really getting into some mixed media products. It's not my favorite by itself, but I do like how sheer that it tends to be when I mix it with uh, Liquitex's glazing medium. So that's what I've done. It's about a third Deco Art fluid acrylic and two thirds Liquitex glazing medium. And I'm just spreading that all over my canvas and then using baby wipes to wipe it back and I'll kind of keep going back and forth doing what I call the song and dance and you'll probably hear me refer to the song and dance fairly often if you come back to my YouTube channel because um, it's where I give and I take I give and I take I add and I take away I add and I take away until I'm happy with the results and I really love that about acrylic mediums and Donna Downey is the one who introduced me to glazing and it is has completely changed my mixed media life like truly truly it's kind of just everything I was aiming for with a bunch of other products that I couldn't always exactly get ready to or get to work out exactly how I had envisioned them and when I learned about glazing it's perfect I'm just it's done so that's it you can see it's got this like really cool gray tint to it now my canvas does I did get out my relics and artifacts piece um, and then from the mood board, so I kind of drew, um, I picked this Relics and Artifacts piece that is kind of like an angel head and it's got these big glamorous wings. And it just kind of reminded me of the, the fortune telling um, and or zodiac aspect of the mood board. And then I chose a bunch of the neutrals from the mood board. I did stay away from the colors this time, but next time I'm going to try really hard not to do that. I'm going to try really hard to incorporate the colors. But I really drew from the great image that Jen picked that had some sticks with a little bit of weaving around it. So I have some sticks here and I've kind of broken them all down to size and kind of made them a little bit more uniform, but also tried hard to make sure that each one was unique in its own um, capacity. Each one has a little bit of, of life to offer our, my canvas. And I'm just arranging those on there and kind of figuring out exactly where I want those. And then I'm going to scoot, I scoot them down to the bottom and using my Catalyst uh, and Princeton um, little spatula, or I guess it's a Princeton Catalyst, it's the mini blade, using one of the mini blades and some golden heavy gel. I have heavy gel because I'm working with wood now on top of my canvas. Uh, I am going to place those wood, the little sticks in order and kind of create like, kind of like a little background uh, for my relic and artifacts piece to rest on. And you can see I have sticks of different colors, different types, different widths, different textures. Um, some of them are softer and some of them are harder and they all come from different trees and I just kind of pick them up when I'm at the park or walking down the street and give them a quick rinse when I get home and then I kind of just um, have a little, not kind of, I do have a little tin that I just put them in like a little tin bucket 
and I can kind of pick out of there whenever I like. Now you'll see as I'm putting these sticks down, they're ending up in a little bit different place than I had uh, originally put them, and that was just to kind of add a little bit more life. So I'm moving some of them a little up and moving some of them a little down, and maybe even turning some of them if they had like a bump in them or something like that, so that it so that it really shows and uh, that stuff isn't lost. because individuality is important. Um, I, oh, now I'm going to, using the same type of glazing that I did before, so a little bit of Deco Arts fluid acrylic and some Liquitex glazing medium, plus my beautiful Simply Simmons brushes. I love these brushes like none other. Uh, I'm gonna glaze my Relic and Artifacts piece. At first I thought that I wanted to leave it all white, but as I kind of was working on my project and I started fitting things together. You'll see me do that a lot too. Uh, I don't always have a plan when I start. I am Sometimes I have kind of an idea and I don't exactly know how it's going to work out, but I always love the end result. Um, I had thought that I was going to leave this relic and artifact white and then as I was playing with it on top of the sticks with the gray background, I thought it would look really great uh, kind of aged a little bit with some uh, gray in all of the cracks and crevices that come from this really great piece. And of course, I let it dry, and the acrylic <laughs> clinged to my underpaper, so that underpaper is probably out the window, but that's all right. And then using my Tim Holtz poker, I just made sure that the holes were clear because I definitely know that I want to thread uh, some ribbon, some twine through this relic and artifacts and tie it to the board, um, not glue it. So I'm going to do that here, and I kind of fight for a couple seconds with the ribbon. It's a baker's twine from May Arts. It was really, really kind of giving me <laughs> a, some problem there. But uh, eventually I'll just finally get smart, and I'll get a piece of wire to help me feed the, feed the twine through. So the holes are plenty big. It's just that the twine itself doesn't really stay wound together. It starts to fray really bad at the end, and you almost just can't even get around it unless you were to glue the edges and then wait for the glue to dry and, and that kind of stuff. So Now I did end up crossing. You can see um, where, where the twine goes in on one side, so it goes in on the bottom right, but it comes out on the top left. And I thought that that would be a great addition to the strength of the piece, and it would just keep it um, a bit more sturdy than if I had run it straight from one side to the other. Now I've got these Umwell Studio feathers and I'm actually going to cut part of this video out. I was playing with these feathers and I did really kind of, oh, I thought that I really liked how they were going and I actually ended up gold foiling them which in itself is a cool technique but I once the gold foil was done it really wasn't matching the canvas and it was kind of just too much going on at one time. So uh, I do end up nixing that but that's why you see those feathers now, and then they just don't even end up on the original, or right, on the finished piece, so. And here I go, kind of playing with that twine, and then I did take it off camera, but that's just so that the resin and um, the, the relic and artifact wasn't rubbing against the table, but I just flipped it over and tied it in a knot in the back, so that's all good to go. Oh, I'm going to do, um, this is an image transfer, so I thought that that kind of like big block of white, it's, it's this little, kind of this little like tag that I had, um, it was a little too stark with everything else that was going on, so I put down a little bit of matte medium, I ripped up a piece of book text, I put the book text down, and then I let it dry, and now I have kind of ripped off the excess, because I didn't glue it down, I just put a little bit of matte medium so that it would transfer the text, and I did that so that the text was backwards. Because it's okay in the background if my text is going the right way, people aren't really concentrating on reading it, but I wanted to avoid that um, with, the, with the image transfer. So, uh, yeah, so that's what I did. Image transferred, I put it down with matte medium, and then I used water and my paintbrush and my fingers to work off the paper after that matte medium had been dry. And I used um, a fine liner that I have an equal mix of golden fluid acrylic and uh, airbrush medium to put some big gray splatters. And then I used a small, really fine um, script brush to put some thinner, kind of more dainty splatters around. 
And now I had a few of the gold foil scraps left over on my table that from when I had done the feathers and I actually really liked how they looked kind of scattered along the bottom. So using some Yoohoo and a paintbrush, whatever scraps I had laying on the table, I adhered to my canvas. It's very random, nothing was planned, I just scraped some glue on there and then wherever the gold foil stuck, it stuck. And that's what I got and I love it, it's so perfect. Um, it's very personal, but it, I didn't tell it where to go. It just went where it wanted. So, so we were like working together, I guess I could say. And now I have some Unwell Studio stars. And I kind of was talking about this earlier, but you'll see me play with things a little bit. I never really glue anything down right away. I'll reposition it and move it around and see where it looks best. I play with it. I put it down. I take it away. I put it down. I take it away. It's very important to me that I'm super happy with my work and sometimes that takes um, a lot of thought from me and sometimes it takes a night. Sometimes I have to sleep on something before I glue it down. So some of my projects, instead of getting them done, say in two hours on a Friday, sometimes they'll take me a half an hour Friday, a half an hour Saturday, 10 minutes Sunday, 20 minutes Monday, and I really stretch them out so that I'm super happy with them because I... Um, I don't know, I take a lot, a lot, a lot of pride in my work, especially in my artwork and my artistry. And uh, I want to be just as happy with it as the person who's either A, buying it, or B, receiving it. It's really important to me um, that we're both happy with it. So, yeah, I don't do anything right away. I think about things a lot. And that's it. So those chipboard, I want studio chipboard stars were glued down with some gel medium. And, uh... My gold foil's done and everything's great. Okay, so if I missed anything, I'll make sure and write everything out in the description box below, as well as on the blog post where you can link up if you'd like to be inspired by our mood challenge. And we're not sure where this is going to go in the future, Jen and I, but we thought it was a really great way to expand our creativity, as well as being able to offer more of our knowledge um, to those of you who subscribe to us. So please subscribe to me. Then go visit Jen, and you can subscribe to her, or if you're here from Jen, thank you so much for coming over. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you guys do. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you on the 20th in August for our next one.